because the walk-in cooler, it's pretty awesome. So this is where they hang the meat to age it. So depending on what you want, you want at least usually two weeks. If you really want to age it and get all the water weight out of it, you can go longer. But how amazing is this? These are all the rails. You can see they're on the hooks. They just bring the rail through. This is like my dream. Is that not amazing right there? And the smell of hanging beef. <laughs> I love it, yes. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and kind of give you guys a better view than my face. Okay, so look at that guy. So all of this belongs, and are those hogs in the back? Straight back there? Yeah. Yeah, so there's some hogs in the back. So there's pork and beef in here. And so these are all quartered out here. And then they've got whole hogs hanging in the back there. So just absolutely amazing. Everything's tagged. So you can see that. We got some hogs right here too, one there. So this is pretty cool, guys. Got their grinder here. Huh. Those are pigs? Oh shoot, it is. That's pigs. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay guys, this is pork. Wow. Hold on. But that's a cow, right? Or is that a pig? That's all pork? Holy I've never run a pig that big. Oh my gosh. Wow, yeah. Look at that, guys. That is straight lard pig right there. Look at that back fat. Yes. Hey, guys. So right here is the cutting station. So one butcher on each side of the table and they cut there, so simple. It comes right out the on the rail here, and then they can just drag it off and lay it on the table. There's their bandsaw here, guys. It's literally a Toledo high-speed meat saw. Now, I, <laughs> I'm like, I totally use a darn uh, Sawzall. That's how I cut meat. It's with a sawzall. I have one that's just for butchering. Well, <laughs> I don't have a bandsaw. Oh no! no, 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 no. <laughs> but you guys see the rails come all the way around, and these actually came from. Oh, scale. So, uh, oh here's your scale yeah. right here. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. Scale, really so this section down. here is where the scale uh -huh. is hooked up to. That's so cool. And this is the real whole scale. Where these rails. Oh, yeah, like the, that's so cool guys so there's the old weight station down here and then the new digital is above it and it's all connected to this area here you can see where it's nice and worn out so cool so these rails actually came from Lira's and that is a store in Rio Vista California and I will show you guys on our trip back home I'll stop and take some photos and stuff so you guys have it used to be Don Quick yes yeah. best pickles around and there's the butcher. <laughs> and there's You want to say hi? I have he's a YouTube not, channel. He's not the butcher today. <laughs> you want to say a few things about your setup here? Uh, it's been a God bless. It's God sent since this place is open to give all our family a place to work together. Yeah. How many head of cattle do you have right now? Uh, there's probably 50 here. Probably all together, like 170. So you guys have steers and bread. How do you guys do cows, it? Cows. We have cows, bread cows, and cows, and then we have uh, the, the steers on the farm. Here, getting pasture and the female steers here. Awesome, cool. So your guys' customers, do they? You guys solely butcher your meat here, or are they allowed no, to bring we, another we, cut? We cut everyone's meat. Uh, they we raise them. Like you raise yours. Yeah. We custom cut people's yeah. animals for them. Oh man, I might have that's to take advantage of that. Me. I know. Because <laughs> I was telling you, I was like, you I get 100% of your meat back. That's yeah. why I don't take it in yeah. to over a ribbon. Yeah, yeah. You, do 100, you get 100% of your meat back. Sometimes we can manage the back. Yeah. Them over here, too. So, you guys have like some of the biggest hogs I've ever seen back there. Oh, that guy brought pigs in. I can't. Yeah. Did you see it? Your nose. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, you're going to have room for a deer in your ribs. Those are huge. So, how long would it take you to cut that quarter right there? This right here? Yeah. Uh, probably 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yeah, the whole, the whole process probably less than an hour. Wow. Yeah. Pretty good. Right here, probably less than three, four hours. Yeah. 
24 hours, something like that. And so how much do you think is hanging there? Estimated. Right here? Yeah. Probably 65, 70 pounds. Nice. And then... This, this right here is probably 175. Awesome. So when you guys are cutting, what's the average that you bring in just for like a homegrown steer that's about 18 months-ish? It's probably going to be about two years old. You're probably going to... You know, if it's on a grain or grass, anywhere from 600 pound carcass to 800 pound carcass, we should do about 63 or better percent. Nice. So you get 63 percent of your meat, you get all the bone, fat, the you know, trim that comes off of it. Yeah. And so, as far as this, what could someone expect if, if they were to like say, hey, I want to have a half? Or the, what are they going to pack? How many freezers are they going to need? Like <laughs> you'll need one, so a half will sit with like like a, a 125 quart freezer will fit a half of a, a quarter of meat. Okay. So like our big freezer is like 275 quart, 300 quart will fit a, a whole meat. Okay. Stack it in nicely. Awesome. Otherwise, it won't fit. Okay. And so then this is like this ice chest right here is probably 45, so it would be nine of those. Nine of those? Yeah. Okay. Roughly around nine of those. So if someone was looking to start buying fresh, locally raised meat, what would you be, like, the first suggestion, like, what should they search in their Google? Who should they try to find in their area? Uh, well, it all depends on what they want. If they want grain-fed or if they want grass-fed. More than likely, people on my channel are going to want grass-fed. Grass-fed? Well, uh, look for, you know, like, I don't know, reputation, really. It's easy to make a dollar from somebody. Yeah. But to be honest with somebody, you know, you're going to lose that dollar. So, you know, like all of our cattle are all grain fed. They're raised on grass, they're fed on grass, but they're also finished grain off on grain. Yep. Yeah. Same they're, with mine. But they're, they're still on the grass. So they're not yeah. just so slowly on, on grain. So they're not feedlotted by you would think Harris Ranch or, you know, Cal, yeah. Cal Bat or something like that. Yeah. They're, like, they're free range. They come, to, they come to the feed, not like we're feeding them. You know? Yeah. Um, but the grain finish, what? Do you see is the benefit of that the marbling? The, the marbling, uh, your yield weight afterwards, after you're all done, uh, you're going to have a high, higher consistency of meat. Like we're on grass fed, their animals not, it, it'll grow, but it won't like produce, it's not going to produce much of it because, like, you know, this is, majority of this is fat. Yeah. Know? I mean, a lot of customers like fat, some of them don't. So, you know, on a, on a grain fed steer, which I'm sure there's one in here. Our grass fed, like that gap back right there is grass fed. You can tell them. Real, real thin. Yeah, it's, it's, there's less fat on it. So guys, straight back there is the grass fed. I mean, it's a, it's a, there's a lot more, a lot more, more, more to these. Like, I mean, the grain makes them grow. Yeah. You know, um, it, I mean, puts on fat, puts on pound. So, it, uh, you know, it, it's all on the texture of the meat, too. So, if you get grain fed compared to grass fed, grass fed's going to be a little more tougher. It may be better for you, but your grain fed is more tender and equally probably about the same amount of okay. okay. You know, like all our cattle are not organic or grass fed, but they all are we vaccinate them all the babies to make them healthy. Yeah. So they make the whole eighteen months to you know yeah. four months. So that we don't have to give them that We're not having to give them sickness. You know, they're all healthy cattle. Yeah. If they do get healthy, they can do get sick, they come out of the herd, they come out of the group, and then they get dispersed and become the cattle. So, okay. Awesome. So this one here, how long has that one aged? It looks this like it's already here. been aging. This one here, yeah, probably three weeks. Three weeks. It was three weeks yesterday. Okay. Perfect. And so the one in the back that's more red, it's probably gonna be a little bit more fresher. Uh, not necessarily. No. Uh, they, they, this steer right here is on three weeks, and that that steer right here will probably have to be probably eight, eight and a half two weeks without it being two days or two thousand. Like, really dry out the meat. Okay. Where you cook this, and you, it, it'll have moisture to the meat. If you cook that, and there's no fat content at all, it will be a drier piece of meat that you cook it. Yeah. So, we'll that. Okay, awesome. So, how many do you cut a day, like, on these? How many hooks will you take down uh, tomorrow? So, if I was really vicious, I'd cut these two things of this meat, but, you know, <laughs> busy, so, and I have to my kids, so we just try to do, you know, we try to do one species at a time. Okay. So we'll do these all, all these, and you know, clean up and do a lamb, or we'll do a beef and start with something. Oh, so that's a lamb right there. Correct, it's a lamb. Right there. Okay.
Where? Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't even see those guys. There we go. Okay. That's awesome. Well, Richard, thank you so much for taking us through your walk-in. This is pretty amazing. If anybody was going to try to cut at home and do it themselves like I did, what would you say is your go-to brand of knife? Uh, well, I'm sixth generation on this ranch, and to be perfectly honest with you, I would strictly just go with German steel knives, okay. um, Swiss or something like that. But I would suggest that you go to a professional to do anything, <laughs> because saving money isn't always the best way of getting the, all your money back. That's my opinion. I know it's my mom's, most of my customers as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, you wouldn't get a roofer to come do your plumbing. <laughs> but they just really want to learn, though, if it's like something that they want to craft themselves, just like how someone um, they want to build furniture, so they want to kind of build their own supplies for butchering. I, I mean, yeah, it's a long process if you don't know exactly every cut, you know. I mean, I could probably buy myself in a meat wrapper, I could probably knock out a beef in six you hours. Our house. What? You yeah, I mean, you, you, have to have the, you have to have the material to do it too. I mean, like everyone wants to be a, everyone wants to be a butcher, but they, you know, it makes your, you, when, you, when you cut it without a bandsaw, or you use a smaller grinder, everything takes as long, you know, like your cuts, if you bone them all out, that's easy, it's simple, but if you don't, then it's a longer process, and then you don't get all your steaks, you know, an inch thick, or you yeah. know, your hamburger, you know, 30% fat, you know. Um, but, I, I mean, it. it's just harder to it, You can do it at our house. Yeah, it, it, it's, you probably have some stuff you see at home. I, can, I yeah. can see how it could be fun. I mean, it is a lot of work. I love it. Yeah, I love it is it. a lot of work, and it's, it's time consuming, and, and uh, if you want to learn, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, to me, I enjoy it. I mean, I love every day coming to work. I do. Yeah. I mean, it is, I go home tired and wake up ambitious to go to work, so. I <laughs> That's know. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, my grandfather, <laughs> every morning, never wanted to come here, but couldn't let, couldn't, couldn't, like, be, I mean, he was here every, all the time. Yeah. So. You know, when I first started working here, I, I worked for two years for free just so I can be part of my family's thing. Yeah. Now I run, I run it, so, you know, yeah. and I've learned every trade there's possibly possible on a ranch. Yeah. You know, from farming to ranching to cutting meat to everything. Yeah. You know, we get to see the whole life of the animal, you know, and have respect for them. So where some people, like, you know, your normal slaughterhouses, they, they'll they get a truck, a cow in a truck, and then it goes on the kill floor, it dies, and then it, it gets cut up. and. You know, they have no idea where that animal went. I know that calf right there is going to come, you're going to get fed, going to go to some happy family, and I'm going to cut it. Yeah. And I saw that calf before. Yeah. So it's, it makes it a, you know, kind of a respect thing, you know, too. Yeah. You know, I make sure that they get done right, and, I, you know, every animal on the property gets treated with respect. So, you know, I think that's our biggest thing, is that we, all of our animals, even though what we do is probably not the most, you know, liked thing anymore, I guess, but it still is, you know, what we do is... It's the better way. Yeah. Yeah. They have a good some of, I mean, some of our cattle are a quarter of a million dollars worth, you know, just for one cow. Yeah. You know? So it's, you know, it's special to us, I guess. Yeah, good bloodline. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's the genetic. Okay, guys, Richard, come on back over here real quick. So, yeah, come on. So, guys, I just want to thank them so much for allowing me in. This is Tommy Dorio here, and we have Richard Diaz, and this is my brother-in-law's family. So it's real special to be able to come out here and see what my nephew's growing into. He gets to experience the ranch life. I have a farm, you know, this is like a big, huge meat operation. I love their setup. It gives me some things to aspire to. I love that he gave some tips, some real valuable ones too, as far as like, I cut for three days when we <laughs> knocked out that huge, way too big of a steer. Like that was way too ambitious for my little body. But <laughs> I will tell you, if I had known I could just bring it here, I probably would have been bringing half that bad boy over yeah. here <laughs> instead of calling in reinforcements. But I hope this video brought you guys some value. I'm gonna take you around the ranch a little bit, show you some pictures and just show you the quality of their cattle and what a family organization does. This is sixth generation? I'm six. Sixth generation here, so you're fifth. Yeah. yeah. My daughter will be seventh. Seventh, and my and nephew as well. Yeah. yeah. So you guys know little farmer Jacob. You've seen him on my channel many times, and his daughter's Macy, and his son's Owen. 
And so the generations are gonna keep on pouring out here at Gates Ranch and the bloodlines don't even go thick and really strong with their cattle, it's in the family too. So thank you guys so much for joining us here at the butcher shop and I hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you have any comments or questions that you want to know that I can answer in a future video, let me know and I'd be happy to come back and answer them with our uh, professional butcher here. <laughs> Thanks guys. Okay guys, so we're actually gonna head over to their hay barn. Super cute guys, really barn red. Like I go and buy the barn red paint from Tractor Supply to make all my stuff barn red. They've just got it, it's legit here. It's super old, it's got a tin roof. It's even got the weather vane. I'm gonna turn you guys <laughs> original weather vane guys. How awesome is that? <laughs> Reservoir up here. Isn't that crazy? I, I, my grandparents bought this for nothing like years ago. This all used to be trees. Yeah, it used to be apricot trees and stuff. It was an apricot wow. tree. Wow. See how it's got that kind of. See, yeah. You can't hardly tell, but no, oh, see that hill over there? Oh, yeah. Way over. See how it had the terrace firming? Mm hmm. That's so cool. I like how they just went with the natural bit of it. I'll get a picture of that on the way out. So, this is where we feed them. Oh, nice. So they have access to come down here and get their feed? Yep. That's so, so cool. Side. It's on both sides and yeah. on the back, too. Okay. So it's kind of like a dairy setup a yep. little bit. Yeah, that's where we got these. Okay. See, many years ago, my, what, you know, they had, the, they had dairy cows and stuff, too. Here, turkeys, dairy cows. That's but awesome. not a lot, just a few, you know, just every place did. And so what kind of hay are you feeding them right now? Just, it, they're just being fed like a, like a pasture mix, like a rye, oat, uh, irrigated pasture mix. Okay. We, all of that's our own, we raised our own. Okay, how many acres of hay do you grow? Uh, probably 150, on just, just that comes here, and then the rest of the cows are fed off a different ranch. Wow. That we, it's, and it's, you probably passed it on the way here. Probably. Yeah. So you guys keep your cattle in California all? all yeah? 100% of them stay in California. Turkey's down there in the creek area. But it does, it runs, it runs. It has some that comes down here and it'll have water here. Do the cows get access to it or can they get down there or no? Like I said, there's a reservoir up there that they get into. That's so awesome. Yeah, they can get down in there. You can also fall from that tree here. Oh, thank you. No, no, that was like me. This is literally their front yard, guys. They've got, look at this. They've got their steers just right here. So awesome. I love that they surrounded their house with their ranch. They put their house like right in the middle and they use all their hillside to graze on. Pretty cool. So they've all got grass out there and they've got free choice hay as well. So they're right. Maya, what are you guys looking at? Cows! Say the cows! <laughs> Baby Owen and Maya checking out the steers here in the front.
Hey guys, Rochelle here from My Vintage Farm. We are here at the Gates Ranch in Vacaville, California, and we are calling it a day. It has been so beautiful. We've got some Herefords over there just chilling, and those are steers. So some Hereford steers, and we're taking off. That's it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm going to try to add in some more information, but please leave some questions in the comment area. I would love to get your feedback and um, make a second video to this. I will be coming back on a uh, work day, so we'll get that footage for you as well. And, yeah.